come to Epicenter Stockholm, where I would like to meet a very interesting figure, a very interesting personality. His name is Ivan on tech. What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to yet another episode of Good Morning Crypto. And uh, what is mostly important in our industry, in the tech industry, in the industry of crypto and blockchain, there are very many young people. Like Ivan is only 21 and he's already famous. I think he's rich. He's a developer and my goal to tell you the insights, to share with you the insights from him because I guess it will be pretty pretty useful for you. Let's go upstairs and uh, talk to Ivan. Hey, hey Ivan, I was just talking about you. <laughs> okay, so let's start then. Um, you're from Stockholm, right? You were born here because your, your name is Ivan, which yeah, is pretty exactly. Russian, you know? Yeah, so I was originally born in Belarus. In Belarus. Minsk, and then we moved to Jönköping, which is a city here in the south of Sweden. Yeah. And then I moved to Stockholm three, four years ago when I started university here. Uh, so I studied computer science at the Royal Institute of Technology here in Stockholm and that is when I moved here uh, as well to, to study. I know you have a very popular YouTube channel like with uh, millions of views already but uh, you started like a crypto channel or it was just a techie channel because the name of it is Ivan on Tech. Yeah so originally it was uh, programming but uh, it very quickly developed into a crypto channel because I got so many questions about uh, cryptocurrencies, Ethereum, decentralized applications. And so then I started teaching about those aspects more and more. And uh, I mean, the more you do it, the more you realize that this is significant and so many people want to learn and that I really had my niche that wasn't uh, filled. And therefore, it, quite naturally, it developed into a crypto channel. Hello, everyone. And today I want to talk about four things I think every software developer should know. Was it popular before you've gone into crypto? So I started in April last year doing... Uh, oh, just uh, last year. Exactly. And then uh, pretty quickly I did uh, uh, cryptocurrency videos. So it's just, I mean, just a matter of one, two weeks. So I wouldn't... Technically, I started with programming, but it so quickly turned into cryptocurrencies and blockchain. So uh, you could say that I just always did cryptocurrencies. Always did crypto. Mm. You're making money out of the YouTube, YouTube channel? It's it's a money-making thing for you? So, or? I mean, we try to educate, make money through education. So, for example, Academy is very important for us and to be able to have people working on the channel. And uh, this is a good way we found to monetize that both the viewers appreciate and they want to learn and they pay for uh, knowledge. And uh, that being said, a lot is free on YouTube. I mean, uh, I do videos every day, maybe yeah. two, three times a day of free knowledge on YouTube. But then the academy and the online courses are for people who are really, really serious. Maybe you want to start a career, maybe you want to really work in this space and you want to structure a course with exam with homeworks then th it is for you and this is uh, how we are monetizing currently uh, how did you get into crypto oh it was in 2013 so Bitcoin was at $1,000 it was absolutely insane everyone was talking about Bitcoin and it reached all-time high and uh, I bought at all-time high and then it completely collapsed to two uh, to 200 ish <laughs> you know for many people a 21 year old year old guy cannot teach it's like there is so much stuff you should uh, be taught right now but do you think you can teach absolutely I mean we have uh, almost 5,000 students the reviews uh, of the course are amazing on Facebook everyone is really loving it and um, I agree with you that I have a lot to learn about life about life experience that is of course true I mean age gives you a lot however we're also seeing a change in in that regard for example I mean Mark Zuckerberg we mentioned Vitalik yeah. we mentioned a lot of other young people who are creating big things nowadays and I think it is just a change in the mindset that uh, being young is actually an advantage as well but of course when it comes to life experience and uh, all of the other things you learn with age uh, there I have a lot to learn but when it comes to technology when it comes to blockchain when it comes to cryptocurrencies uh, there I am I feel at least and from the feedback I've uh, I've received from the courses is that people have learned a lot and they're really enjoying and now they even want to learn further and that is why we are expanding the Academy now with with programming courses. 
the audience that um, is watching is not only those who are actually experts or uh, maybe there, there are people that would be interested in the course. So absolutely. is there a possibility that you, know, you can give a discount to those absolutely. guys? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's full thing uh, for yeah. them. Like if they, if they are interested in the yeah, course, you can, can they get you a... You can use the discount code, get 50% off on 50%. the... 50%? 50% off on the course. Cool. 50% is great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Do you invest in ICOs and, uh, and in cryptocurrencies? So I personally think the infrastructure projects yeah. are the most interesting. Because if you invest in infrastructure projects, such as, for example, Ethereum, EOS, Cardano, you're really investing in the all future applications that we build will be built on that uh, infrastructure, on that platform. And so in, the, in a sense, it is like investing in a fund, but this fund will be filled with all the new projects that will be built on this uh, on this new infrastructure and that is really the advantage of blockchain that you can really buy a piece of the underlying protocol regarding your your future plans so what are you going to do in the nearest in the nearest future? for example in 2018 2018 2018 so currently we are working on our company socom blockchain we are a consultancy and an educational company so we are actually implementing blockchain solutions. We now have uh, two customers in the US. We plan to expand that uh, even more, both uh, internationally and here in Sweden. You've mentioned analyzing the projects um, on GitHub and everywhere. So, um, you know, crypto is getting really popular now because of, because of uh, investment, because of ICOs. Yes. What's your opinion on uh, that kind of instrument? Do you think, um, except the stuff, except the fact that it's attracting attention to crypto, do you think that's really the the main idea uh, of uh, of the blockchain, right? Of of of, of token, of tokenization. So I think ICOs are really revolutionary in the sense of curing financial exclusion. So what I mean is the following: in many countries, there's just not any capital. In many countries, even if you're brilliant, you have good team, good people, you will not get funding for your project because there's just no VC in your country. So when you are talking about ICOs, really talking about a whole new system where everyone is a part of the global economical system. Wherever in the world you are, you can offer something to the world and get capital from all other countries. Um, doesn't matter when, where you are geographically. Now, as you mentioned, it is a very huge hype nowadays. All new technologies uh, bring some kind of a bubble. And this is very interesting if you look at history. So for example, when trains were new in Great Britain, there were over 200 train companies registering in a year. So how many countries, how, how many train com companies does your country have? Well, maybe a few. In Great Britain, there were over 200 in one year that were re registering. <laughs> so of course, people saw that trains are going to change the world. Trains are amazing, and now everyone rushed into the space. And of course, trains did ch change the world, but this phenomenon is now called British train mania. I think the same thing is currently with cryptocurrencies. They are revolutionary. Blockchain will change the world forever. Now we are all rushing into the space, putting a lot of money, and maybe in a few years we will see similar developments to the train bubble and to the dot-com bubble. And uh, I mean, the worrying thing is that everyone is prepaid. All of these projects are prepaid and they get a lot of money. They get the funding. Now it is time to deliver. And of course, the question is, will they be able to? If we imagine a world where the emerging technologies have already changed the world, blockchain, artificial intelligence, I don't know, everything that, that you can imagine. Can you um, imagine that world? and explain how it looks like. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that machine-to-machine uh, -machine payments are very interesting. I think we will see more machine-to-machine uh, -machine payments in the future. So for example, your car actually has uh, cryptocurrencies. It, instead of having a bank account, it has cryptocurrencies. It can, with AI, drive you. Of course, we have Tesla now doing a lot of progress and other car manufacturers will follow. So for example, imagine that your car drives you, then it needs to refuel itself. It can pay to the gas station automatically, machine to machine payments. Uh, maybe this data is saved on the blockchain. In order to have this global infrastructure and really have machines interacting with each other, I think we need to have some kind of uh, distributed global database. If you see Satoshi Nakamoto and you, you know it's Satoshi Nakamoto, what would you tell him? Well, I would tell him that uh, the technology he has brought to the world is uh, really significant and I would thank him for his innovation. And uh, I would also ask him the questions you asked me. What was the 
initial vision was it to fight the big banks and uh, to really change the financial system or was it to bring all of the other countries who don't have infrastructure currently financial infrastructure to the global economic system for example i, I think it is completely possible to find out who satoshi is completely possible and google probably knows who that is you know uh, when i was thinking of and reading a lot about who satoshi might be is and uh, one of my thought was why would he still be um, keep himself anonymous why mm -hmm. I, and i thought that maybe because he died so, and if you search for Craig Wright and for the team that was with him, or maybe he was part of the team, you will probably understand who Satoshi is. Thank you so much, Ivan. Thank you very much, Ali.